All right. Hey, everybody. It's Darren Tipton with VB Adrenaline and our weekly podcast. And welcome back, first of all, to our listeners and our subscribers. But uh, as we approach uh, prime time for us in the year June 15th, um, coming for 2026s, we are trying to talk about as much information and educational opportunities for the 26s, 27s, and even 25s that are still in their process. Last week, we talked with uh, Recruiting Service, and this week, we are lucky enough to be joined by a couple of the top 2025s in the country, Abby Vanderwall and Carly Gilk. Ladies, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. So Carly, I've talked to a few times. Abby, this is the first time that um, I've been lucky enough to uh, chat with you, but we're going to talk today about what it's like from an actual prospects standpoint, what you guys see, you've been through all this, you've talked to other girls in your class that went through the same thing, I'm sure, compared notes, um, whatever, good and bad. And, and I was going to go through some questions and talk about it. But first of all, I want to start with, because you both had different journeys, which we'll get into. But in a word, Abby, how was your experience with the recruiting process yeah so i mean it started like i don't know eighth grade freshman year and then just kind of started building from there and um, it was great for the most part like everything i'd fill out a questionnaire either here or there or i'd um go to a camp i went to like three camps the two summers before and then one the summer before so just a lot of different camps and I mean it ended up ended up going well I think and I ended up where I wanted to be so I'd say it went pretty well well and I think with your Texas verbal I remember um, we were just kind of dipping our toes in recruiting last year and I don't even think I had woken up yet by the time you had had verbal you, you did it <laughs> right away on the first day correct yeah I committed on June 15. So was it just the one phone call and and that was it or were there yeah. several? Yeah, just one? Yeah, one phone call. <laughs> when, when you know, you know, I guess. But they, uh, <laughs> uh, Carly, what about you? Now, I know we were able to talk a couple times during your process last year, but a much different process. Um, took a lot longer with that, looked at a lot more schools. What was your, as you think back, what was your overall impression of just your entire process now? Yeah, overall, I thought my process, it went really well. Like it went just as I'd hoped. I mean, it wasn't necessarily like stressful. It was just kind of a lot to think about because like I didn't necessarily have like a dream school that I've always wanted to go to. I was kind of looking at like other options, like seeing where I think I'd want to want to end up. But I think in the long run, like I was thankful I looked at different schools and like talked to different coaches, got a feel of like different programs. And like overall, I'm really happy about like where I ended up and how the journey went. So, right, and you ended up at Minnesota. There you go. So Minnesota commit, Texas commit. Well, I guess I guess the ink isn't dry on. You haven't signed the big letter quite yet, but as of now, you're still both. Um, you're a Longhorn and a Golden Gopher. So yeah. So with that, <laughs> let's get into. Um, I thought of some questions. Uh, we have some questions from other student athletes for you guys and we'll go through these and the first one so let's just talk about june 15th all right and abby break it down let's start with you what was your yeah. june 15th like and literally when did texas call yeah so i woke up on june 15th well i went to bed on june 14th stayed up till midnight i guess so i don't know carly if you did that but <laughs> I ended up getting some emails uh, at right at midnight and I got one from Texas, basically scheduling a call for the next morning. And so I think it was scheduled for maybe 10 or 11 and um, got on that phone call. I hadn't talked to any other coaches really and um, maybe talked to one other Texas coach. Um, but I, Jared called me and we talked for a long time and I ended up committing on that phone call. So, so do they like, they offer right away or is it a little get to know you or, or was it? It's definitely, it's definitely get to know you. Yes. Yeah. So they ask about me more about, I went to the camp at Texas right. like the week before. So we had just been talking, but 
that uh, Coach Jarrett and all the other coaches just kind of explained their program, everything that surrounds their program, what they're looking for in athletes, that type of thing. And it was really helpful for me. It definitely gave me a lot of clarity. And um, yeah. Good. And so Carly, we'll bring you in. Um, different process, but tell us what your June 15th was actually like. Yeah. So mine was a lot different than that. Um, <laughs> I stayed up till midnight, got emails and texts and stuff around midnight. But um, I had before June 15th, I had narrowed down like my top like five to 10 schools, I would say. And I just mainly wanted to focus on those schools my first couple days, like after June 15th. So I think on June 15th, I had got up in the morning, responded to the top like five or 10 schools that I had and set up calls with them throughout the day. So I'm pretty sure I had five calls on June 15th. And most of those were just like, get to know you calls, like ask about the program, ask about the coaches, um, stuff like that. I would say they're about like 30 minutes each. Um, but I, at that point, I still like had no idea where I wanted to go. <laughs> Obviously like my process took a little bit longer, but, um, yeah, I think like the first couple calls, obviously you're a little bit nervous, but as the day goes on, it gets a lot easier, um, talking to the coaches, asking questions. Um, yeah. So did any of them, like when they call the first time, did any of them say we're offering you right now, or was it all just informative? Um, most of it was just informative, informative because I'd only gone to, I think I went to like three of the camps beforehand. Um, but like, I think I knew and like they knew, like I wasn't going to commit that day yeah. because I didn't know exactly like where I wanted to go. Um, so yeah, most of them were just like getting to know them informative. And then it kind of just like went on from there. Perfect. All right. So we will uh, move on to our next one. Um, so talk about your parents. And and again, um, and, and Abby, if some of these, if they don't always apply to you because of how quick you decided, just your thoughts now after being a year out of it, right? Yeah. You know, just add your expertise. But what role did your parents play in your process? Um, and how how important do you think parents are um, to recruiting? And, and Carly, let's start with you this time. Yeah, so for me, my parents helped a lot in this process, especially just, I mean, when you are talking to quite a few schools, it does tend to get like a little bit stressful, but they made sure that I had like fun in the process and didn't get too stressed out or like worried about certain schools and stuff like that. Um, but my mom really helped a lot with like organizing emails, helping me like manage my time to set up phone calls and stuff like that. And then when it did come time for the call, she would just be like sitting in the corner, like writing notes <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. When you are like on a call, and especially your first few, it's kind of hard to like remember and fully think about what the coaches are telling you and like the answers um, to the questions you're asking. So it's, it is really helpful to write things down or maybe have like a buddy write stuff down for you just so that like after the call, you can recollect your thoughts and actually like fully like understand what you got out of the call. Um, so that was super helpful. And then also my parents would help me come up like some questions I never would have thought to ask, but like they've been through college and they know what it's like. So just having them there to assist you in that was also super helpful for me. And that'll be one of the questions down the road that I, I really want to ask you about that. Abby, let's bring you in. So were your parents like on the call at all, or was it just you on the call? Yeah, so it was actually my parents at first without me on the call with the coaches because my parents did not get to go to the camp the week before. So they kind of just, the coaches wanted to get to know my parents and talk to them first before they talked to me. But regarding my parents and like their involvement with my um, commitment and stuff, I think it's important to decide for yourself. Sure. As, totally. But like I used my parents so much they were super helpful with just like what carly said just listening in on the calls or my ideas or just listening throughout my process of like what i say about different schools be like hmm, maybe she likes this one more maybe kind of helping me form my list before june 15 even though i knew where i wanted to go and then kind of just deciding like hey this is where i want to go and like this is my my dream school so well i want to uh veer off it and um echo that again because i talked to some 2026 20, parents too long ago and and they're like my daughter will not 
even she's like, I don't even want to think about schools right now. And every time we ask her, she's like, no, I, I'm not ready. Talk about that, that I get it. It's stressful. And I get <laughs> as are teenagers. Right. And sometimes talking to mom and dad isn't um, cool. But right now, how important is it that they start literally making somewhat of a list? Would you say? Because we're only, well, three weeks out. How important is it for them if they haven't started or ha start, haven't started having those conversations with mom and dad that they do that? Yeah, I would say it's pretty important. I mean, especially like if you don't want to be super stressed out on June 15th, it's really nice to have like at least some sort of list, even if it's not like obviously you want it to be realistic, but just starting somewhere and getting the ball rolling a little bit, I would say at this point would be super helpful just to kind of organize things, like know what it feels like to be contacting schools, possibly setting up phone calls, um, stuff like that. I think it's a, it's a definitely a good time to start doing that. And I think um, obviously like some girls might be scared to start this process just because it is kind of overwhelming, but it's also super fun. And like, you can find a lot of joy in it. It doesn't always have to be like stressful and scary. Yeah. Abby, anything you want to add? Yeah, I think June 15 can be overwhelming if you don't know or have any idea where you want to go. So I think like what Carly said, it's super helpful to make like a list. I'd say maybe five to 10 that you're like, I really like these. Otherwise, making a longer list, having like a top tier and then moving like other options and kind of depending on if you hear from them, they move around on your list. So I think it's super important to get a list for sure. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. We'll move into where are we at here. All right. Um, was there anything in the process that you weren't prepared to have happen? Something that caught you off guard, um, you weren't ready for, really took you by surprise in the process? Carly? Uh, yeah, for me, I, there wasn't like too many things that really caught me off guard, but one thing that like you should probably be prepared for is like if you have a school that you really like um, before like you've gone on a visit or anything, just know like things could change like once you get there or once you go to a camp. Like I know I had a couple schools that I was like, yes, like I want to go here. Like this is going to be awesome. And then I would like get to the camp or talk to coaches, talk to players. And I'm like, I do not want to go there anymore. Right. Well, and, and let's talk about that a little bit, too, because I talked to another prospect who went to a, you know, a bigger name school and they were, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And they came back and like they did not get a good vibe at all um, from that. And so it is important to, to take your time. Did you hear? Is it just because that's my biggest question? And maybe we'll skip to it right now um, with you guys. Every almost every athlete I talk to. I say, hey, what's going to be important? And they're like, oh, I got to go somewhere that's got a great culture. Well, y'all say that, but then I'm like, how do you determine if they have a great culture or not? And so two-part question for you guys. And, and Abby, I know you've done research or whatever, but those are the ones, the ones that commit so early. I'm like, how do you really know Right. And what can girls do? Because I say, how how will you find that out? And they're all kind of like, um, how I'm treat, you know, they don't have a great answer. And so yeah. my one point for that, if I'm gonna, if we're gonna teach prospects anything, it's how to really determine a culture rather than saying, Well, I've watched their games for 10 years on TV. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. talk about that. And Abby, let's start with you on that. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, I think the selling point, this is kind of funny, was the culture, which I kind of determined as like the vibe surrounding the team or like how the girls interact with each other and how the coaches interact with the team. It feels like one big family. Like that's what I always tell people. And um, it was just different. It felt like home in a sense. And that's what I was looking for my entire process and there was really no other place I would be like I was thinking of after like going to the camp and just seeing everybody and how they interact and just how Texas volleyball is viewed at UT. And yeah, so I think that was a huge starting point. Okay. And Carly, and then we'll come back to Abby. Carly, what about you? 
Yeah, I agree. For me, I was definitely looking for a school that the team was kind of like the family, like you're supported by everyone. You get like that family feel like everyone's supporting each other. And I think one thing that really helped me, and this kind of took a little bit longer in the process, but like I was calling players that have previously played for these coaches. Like I got all the details, like they didn't sugarcoat it. So I, and also like speaking to current players that have these coaches, what their thoughts are on like the program's culture and how they feel like they're getting treated. And also like talking to the coaches about their philosophy, like, I know I wanted to play for a coach that cared about me more as a person than like an athlete. And so that was super huge for me, just listening to what they have to say about their morals, things they stand by for me as like an athlete and as a person. So I don't know, just like making those phone calls um, with other people, like outside of just the coaches too, like the athletes themselves. Yeah. And Abby, I see you, I see you shaking your head um, in agreement. Um, Anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with the care more as a care about you more as a person than a volleyball player. I think that was a huge deal for me, and like you can totally tell when it's that too. Like, yeah, I think it's just obvious. And um, Coach Jarrett made it clear on our phone call that he really cared about growing me as a person so much more than, well, a lot more than as a volleyball player. So, yeah, that was huge. Okay, and so that's great. Um, I like that. You need that. I appreciate it. But I'm going to play devil's advocate, okay, because I also was a recruiter a long, long time ago, right? And their job is to get you there. So I always call it the I always call it the camp smile, right? Like it's camp. Camp's not supposed to be crummy, hard work, right? Bark at you a little bit. Real life is. So would you ever have a coach that would say, you know what? I don't care. I don't care about you all as a person. Meaning like, how do you wade through that? Because I'm guessing most coaches would all say the same thing. Does that make sense? Like, Carly, you talk like how to- do you determine like if someone actually cares about you or if they're just saying that? Yes. yes. So that's, that's why I like calling the players. Like, I know this is random, but when I was like, getting recruited by Kentucky. Like I called Aaron Lamb for like an hour. Yeah. Just talking about like how the coaches treated them um, like over a long period of time. Cause she was like, she's still there, but yeah. Yeah. Just stuff like that. Like talking to the players was a huge thing for me and was one of the things that I would say is like the most helpful, right. like past and current players. Yeah. And is that something you guys, because you know, um, through NTP playing forever, you know, so many of the girls, in your class is that something most of them is is that's pretty commonplace that they'll call girls on the current team like get their numbers is that is that pretty commonplace that most prospects will do that um i i maybe uh what do you think carly can you repeat the question again like are you saying people like like if you know girls from like USA Volleyball and stuff to contact them. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, so you know all the girls in the 25 class, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. from talking with them, is that something that most of them did call? They're looking at school X. So they called players on school X. Is that pretty common that athletes do that? Okay. So I, I never really talked to anyone about that. Like, I don't think that was like a that wasn't necessarily like a tip that was given to me. But I don't know. I just kind of figured like that would be helpful. Yeah. Especially my this my sister played college softball and like that was one of the things that like helped her a lot. So I guess like that's kind of how I found out about like talking to players and stuff like that. Yeah. Um but yeah, I don't know if it's like super common to do or not, but I assume it's sort Abby, of what about, did you do any of that before after yeah, so I didn't talk to any of them on the phone. I just talked to them at the camp the week before. And right. I, I talked to them, like, privately or in the group setting. And they all, like, they didn't sugarcoat it. They told me everything. Nothing bad. It's just, like, they love it and other, like, other additional things. But um, I knew I could trust the players. And, I mean, for instance, Alice Swindle was there. She was in my group for one of the things. And she just could not stop talking about 
Texas and how much she loves it, which is what you would want your, your student athlete to do to campers. But I think she did a great job and like totally sold it for me. So, well, and I think you would like them too, but I also think Carly's right where they don't athletes won't sugarcoat it, sugarcoat it. Uh, because I've talked to other athletes who went to other schools and were like, Hey, I really got a bad vibe from their, from their players or mm -hmm. the class above me. I just didn't like how we meshed. And, um, but no, I think Carly, if you weren't told that good for you, because I think that's huge. Um, to do um, calling, calling references on there. And, and that's something, that's something real. Um, that's a great bit of advice. So um, were either of you, I think I know this, but told no from a school that you really wanted to attend. So Abby, I'm guessing not since you just talked to, to one, but Carly, yeah. what about you? Uh, no, I wasn't. Cow. That's supposed to be a good life lesson. Getting used to getting rejected a couple of times and, <laughs> We're good for you guys. Well, good for you guys. That's awesome. But uh, that is that's something though we talk with with prospects about as well. Is like, hey, going in, and even if they've been talking to your recruiting coordinator for two months ahead of the time, right? Like, really like her, really like her, really like her. Understand they have a list as well, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And do you think is, is that something that that you guys think you understood? Um, going in like Carly, especially you, the longer you waited that, that, Hey, school X, you know, Minnesota has a list. They have to fill theirs. Um, and they're probably juggling just like you are. Yeah. Um, I think, well, my recruiting coordinator, I think she did a really good job on like communicating that with me and stuff. Like obviously other schools, they have their own timelines. Like they know when they need to be like done recruiting people or like whatever, like the top people at their list. Um, I just think it's super important to like, if a school tells, you no, like know your worth, like it might not always be because of your skill. It might just be like, diff there's plenty of different variables, but yeah. just like, don't lightly lose confidence. If a school tells, you no, um, and just move on. Like there's, if they tell, you no, obviously like you don't want to go there anyways. So, right. Yeah. It's try called finding your true fit. We'll mm -hmm. look at like with setters, how a lot of schools try to take one, maybe one every other year. You may be the best setter in the country and your dream school just took somebody the year before. So it's nothing personal against you. It's just the way it happens. Right. Um, so I think those are good, uh, a piece of advice, um, on that. Let's see what we have next. All right. Um, red flags, just things people, kids could look, should look for to maybe, not necessarily cross somebody off your list, but maybe raise their awareness. Um, because you guys know if I've wanted to go to XYZ University my entire life, even though I might not get a great field, sometimes kids are convinced with the school rather than the process. So anything red flags or things you might give prospects to look for to maybe just raise their awareness on a school that it, it might not be right for them. I would say, I mean, this kind of goes on with like timelines for like committing and stuff. But like, I would say if you're feeling like super rushed for this school, I mean, even if you wanted to go to this school, like it's your dream school. If you're feeling super rushed and don't think you're getting everything out of like the process or the calls that you like should be, and they're just trying to rush you to commit. And like, if you don't like move on to their next player right away, like obviously they have timelines, but if it feels super rushed, I would say like, that at least is kind of like a red flag for me because they're not willing to wait like a couple extra days or whatever, maybe a week for you. Um, but yeah. It's good. Abby, what about you? Yeah, I'd say one I, I think would be um, if you consistently heard the same rumor about a coach or a program from people you trust. Right. Like if, if one of your best friends from NTDP or you're one of your best friends from school, all say the same thing about a certain program, maybe take that into consideration when you're making a decision. Just be like, hmm, may have, I've heard this consistently yeah. from the same person or from a different person, and maybe it'll affect your decision and work out for the better. No, I, I think that's great. And I really like what you guys are talking about, talking with some I mean, of your friends or peers or older players that have been through it, um, especially the last couple of years because recruiting has changed now so much. 
Um, we, uh, Carly, um, I know we had a, a mutual friend and she played Minnesota's in Nashville now. And, and when she was helping me, um, get VB adrenaline off the ground, we talked about recruiting and she's like, Hey, I got recruited when I was like an eighth grader. Like I committed verbal, like it has changed so much now from when I was there. I don't even know if I'd have great advice. So you guys talking with, you know, your friends or maybe uh, girls you played against or got to know that are a year older that have gone through that. that That's what I would think would be the best advice um, because, you know, they don't want ill will for you. So I, I think they're going to be honest, right? I, yeah. yeah. I, would, I would hope. That's great. All right. So I'm going to give you guys just a break for a second here. And we're going to go and pay some bills. We're going to do our uh, prospect profiles. And we'll be right back with our guests. But uh, our Spotlight Prospect Profiles, again, from vbadrenaline.com. And this is an awesome way for us um, to get to know so many athletes uh, we spotlight a couple of them on here, a lot on our social media, and coaches can take a look, but it's your chance to kind of put up your um, your resume. And so let's look at the three spotlight prospect profiles for this week. So first of all, uh, Lola Segir. And Lola, if you look at her camp resume for big camps, she's out of New York, uh, played club ball out of New York, outside hitter. And you'd see all that red on her top scores means an extremely athletic outside hitter. And so we're excited to see what Lola does come uh, the 15th and beyond. Uh, all three of these gals are a class of 2026. So there's Lola Segir at Bali FX out of New York. Next is Coco Nigerian, and I got to talk Coco a little bit at uh, and, uh, USA, or excuse me, Under Armour Next um, in Dallas, and she may be leading the country as far as camps that she's reported. Um, and one thing that you know about Coco, she's going to have a good idea of how things work all over the country. Uh, obviously, schools in Texas where she's from, some SEC schools couple real high academic schools as well. And so uh, a setter, uh, Drive Nation Volleyball, uh, plays a little opposite as well. And so Coco Nigerian uh, is going to have a great idea and feel for many, many campuses as uh, she heads into her process. And let's see, the last one, Bennett Ratterman. And Bennett, um, we got to talk with number one ranked player, um, number one ranked player in Missouri this year, played middle for high performance. And she's attended the Under Armour Next Camp and NTDP as well. Haven't found out a lot about her camps that she's interested in, uh, but have been messaging her. She's excited for her process. Again, one of the middles in a class that we think is extremely deep as far as quality. Um, and so there's a lot of solid middle blockers this year if you're a program that's in need. So, again, those are our Spotlight Prospect profiles on vbadrenaline.com. Those are free to go and check. You don't have to have a site membership uh, and athletes. Great way for you to update and tell us your story as you go through this process. And, again, we're talking with. Uh, Abby Vanderwall and Carly Gilk and two young ladies that are excellent volleyball players, but they've been through this process and we're talking to them about their experience uh, being 2025s and to get ready to prep the 2026s here. So let's go on to um, our next uh, question and we moved on from there. So how important is it for you to attend camp, the school you pick and Abby, I'm guessing I'm going to know your answer, but I've heard different things as well. I hear, hey, first of all, this is really expensive to go to a lot of camps. Um, you guys do not have many free days in your summer. Um, and so I heard other prospects at the end of their process were like, you know what, if I had to do it over again, I, I've seen these coaches, they've seen me play, I wouldn't go to camp. I've heard others say, listen, I would never have gone there if I didn't go to their camp. So, Abby, once you start out, how important do you think it is to attend camp at the school you end up choosing? Yeah, I think it was super helpful. I've said earlier that it gave me a ton of clarity on my decision. Um, and the 
summer before June 15, I went to three camps. I'll say where I went to Nebraska, yeah. Baylor, and Purdue for those three camps. And uh, all of them were great. I had a fun time at all of them. Um, and then the summer before, or the summer of June 15, right before, the week before, I went to Texas with a couple of my friends for camp. And it was a blast. Like, we had the best three days ever. Um, I got to know the program way more. It kind of gives you, like, you see all the things about the college. You see, like, what kind of program it is, but you don't really know. So this camp, like, you know, you get to meet the players. You get to see it firsthand. Like, this is what it is. And for me, it was kind of the selling point of, like, hey, yeah, I really want to go here. So. And, and did you, were you looking at other camps if, Texas didn't work out. Were you looking that summer to maybe go to a couple later on, or was that you knew? Yeah. Um, I was like up until May, I was looking for other camps to go to maybe in the year later in the year. If I didn't, if Texas wasn't for me, if the camp was like a complete no or whatever, yeah. I was going to maybe look to go to other camps later in the summer. But after Texas went so well, I just, I knew it was the spot. So. Absolutely. Carly, um, I'm guessing you went to Minnesota camp. Being a Minnesotan, you might have gone there a time or two, but what's your take on this? Yeah, so I actually, the only Minnesota camp I went to was after I committed, actually. Oh. <laughs> um, but the other camps I went to um, this summer, or last summer, I went to Kentucky, Louisville, and Ohio State. And I do think those were all, like, very helpful Um a couple like when I went to like I knew that school like wasn't for me um it's just it helped it gave me a lot of clarity on like like what the culture was like how the coaches interacted with players um and just how like the teammates themselves like interacted with each other like working the camps and stuff like that yeah. um and it was also nice to be able to like see the campus like ask questions like to the players about I like anything you have about um, the college itself, but I would say I think it is important to like go to a few camps, especially to like schools that you're super, super interested in. Um, but I wouldn't spend like a ton of time trying to go to every single camp that you can. I feel like you can also just kind of get burnt out of going to camps and not really get like the full experience out of it. Yeah. too. Yeah. Especially when you guys don't get much of a break. Sometimes it's nice just to have a day to do nothing. I would think. And, and clear your mind um, with your process. So, all right, uh, we'll keep moving here. And um, all right, so we talked about the culture already. We're gonna skip that um, and, and asking about that. But so with deadlines, we touched on this a little bit, but um, either of you given any, um, or do you talk with other girls in the class? Like how do prospects feel about deadlines um, because I think it's something that isn't really talked about a lot beforehand, but that would be pretty stressful if I'm thinking, Hey, I'm going to talk to six schools. And then the second one's like, Hey, you got a week or 24 hours or whatever. So what are the thoughts, Carly? We'll, we'll start with you. Um, maybe your thoughts on deadlines. Have you had any and, or what have you heard from other um, prospects? Yeah, so I haven't really talked to other prospects about deadlines, but when I was like going through the process with my recruiting coordinator, she always kind of told me like if a school is giving you like a super strict deadline, like it might not be the school for you. And obviously this is like different for everyone, but like I said before, if like the school is trying to rush you, like give you a 24 hour deadline, like it kind of just goes back to like, do they really care about you as a person more than an athlete? Um, so I like, I took that into consideration a lot and no one actually like told me I had a deadline, but the coaches I talked to, like, were transparent about like telling me if they were going to offer someone else in the next sure. like couple weeks or whatever. Um, so I think it's important to like have that transparency with the coaches too, just so you know, what's go going on. And so you're not like stunned if somebody accepts an offer that was also given to you. Right. Well, and I think you use the key word there, transparency. Um, coaches have a deadline, right? If they need a setter, they have to get a setter, right? And if there's two of you they really like, I think that's different if they explain that to the prospects, right? 
Yeah. Um, but uh, if they if they don't, and then all of a sudden somebody commits, you're like, whoa, I thought I was their number one. That's a little bit different, right? And and so transparency, I see it both ways because I can see coaches saying, hey, I got a roster to fill here, right? Um, on their end, but I think there's a, you touched on a right way of doing it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Abby, what about you and, and timelines or, or things you've heard? Yeah, uh, kind of the same as Carly. I didn't hear any, talk to any other prospects about deadlines. Um, I didn't get any deadlines. I knew where I wanted to go, so it's a little different. But um, deadlines are kind of scary, I think, in my opinion. Like, it's – you could, like, lose your opportunity at a school you may want to go to. But also, I completely agree that you have to be transparent with the coaches you're talking to and just let them know where you're at and where other schools are at with you. And I that helps them. It helps you. And um, for me, like – my scenario was a little different because I committed so early, but um, yeah, definitely for other athletes who are waiting longer, just be transparent and tell them where you're at and just make it clear. Yeah. And I think Carly hit it with, uh, it, it might not be the right place for you, right? Even as tough as that may be to hear right mm -hmm. now, you don't know the right place until you literally find the right place. Yeah. Um, and, but it can be a really stressful, um, stressful time. Um, I'm, I'm sure as you guys have, uh, have gone through that. So, um, um, oh, okay. Do you believe that, um, um, I always ask this and we talk about this and this is like, um, I always think about this in the fall, right? So if, um, I, I think Abby, one of your teammates, um, Callie um, Kruger, right, lives in Austin, Texas, right? Yeah, yeah, she ended up going to Texas. But if another program saw her like at a Texas match, do you think they would not recruit you? Or if you cheered for Nebraska in the national title game and School X saw that, do you guys really believe? Because when I talk, when I talk to prospects, they are so scared to talk about anything at all because they don't want to scare away another school. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now being veterans, can you talk on that point of my belief has always been if a school wants you, they're going to recruit you. Right. Agree. How yeah. do you guys feel about that? I would agree with that a hundred percent. I mean, obviously everyone talks like everybody has schools they want to go to or yeah. I don't know if a coach sees them wearing another school sweatshirt, like whatever, but I don't really think coaches are, they're not listening to that. Like they don't care if, if they think you're a good athlete and if they think you'd be a good fit for their program, like they're going to do everything they can to like get you to enjoy their school and want to go there. Yeah. yeah totally. I think that like, if you do go to a game and you cheer for a team, you do that. But if, again, if a coach really wants you, they're going to recruit you, not because you're rooting for a different team, but because you're, you want to play in college. And I think, yes, it's not great to see them looking at another school. Like you want them looking at your school, but I mean, I'd still recruit the kid if I saw them. So. Well, and I was taught, you know, Carly, you're going to big 10 country. Um, and that's as competitive recruiting wise and rivalries as there is. Um, Abby, you're going to have a pretty good one with uh, your in-state neighbors as soon as you get there. But with rivalries, like those coaches are competing too. So if their rival offers you or you go to their rival's camp, if they really truly want you, aren't they going to dig in their heels and compete against that school to get you? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. It. This is the one time where you're like, it's, I just think it's okay to celebrate a little bit. If you went to a camp and had a great time, I, I totally think it's okay. And School X is not going to be like, well, they had a hard, they had a great time at camp. We'll never get her. They, that's just not how it works, right? It's a business. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All right. Well, good. I and I hope we get better because some of it's cool to say where you've been. You just, you guys get to experience such cool things with going to different parts of the country and seeing some of the coolest campuses. Like, what if you really like the architecture at School X, right? Or, you know, are the football stadium's amazing. Or, I, yeah, 
I think that's your guys' right to talk about that and hopefully do. So, um, all right, we've gone over that. Um, but this is a question from one of our online viewers. So, Camps, you attended. We've talked about that. Last one, what are you most excited for with the schools that you chose? Abby, let's start with you. What are you most excited for um, heading to Austin? Oh boy. Okay. Um, part of choose just one thing. I would say just to be a part of that family. I mean, there's such a family feel there and just, I had a gut feeling that it was where I needed to be and just excited to be with my class, like my class, Kari, Taylor, Maddie and Callie and um, get to know the girls more and then just compete with each other in practice and then just have fun and play the best we can. So I think I'm most excited just for to compete and get to know everybody. I always ask, are you excited for, do they give you the themes for the photo shoots every year or is that a surprise? I don't know. I, Have I you seen their last ask. couple? The, um, they're in an airline hangar. Um, yeah, I would have to ask. I don't know. I mean, to me, that, that'd be a reason to go. They're at a Formula <laughs> One track, I think, with race cars one year. So yeah, um, yeah they they do it right. So ask about that. Carly, what about you and your, what are you most excited about with your school? Um, yeah, I also think it's really hard to choose just one thing, but um, yeah. I've just, for like the years that I've lived here, like I've always just heard about the culture that like the Gopher fans provide at the PAV and just that feeling of being able to play there in front of all these people that like care so much about you. Um, so I think that's like a big part for me. And also just like, getting to know the girls, like making my home at Minnesota and just being part of the family there. Do you think I always, I ask, um, cause I know as fans, right. We want the best in state kids to stay there as passionate fans. Um, a lot of other things go into the decision, but does that kind of excite you that now that you're doing it, you're playing for your home, your home state school. Yeah. That was also like kind of a big piece um, cause I knew that if I played in other States, like no one would really know who I was. And I don't know, it's just something like about being able to play in front of like the little girls that I've grown up, like coaching at camps yeah. and stuff on like a bigger stage that like really excited me. So, well, and I want to end on this because you guys are at a little bit different spots right, right now. Like Carly, I think it's an exciting time you know, with a new regime coming in to go for volleyball and you being that first class really kind of, you know, uh, a new history and being that first group, what does that feel like? And have you talked to the other girls in that class about, Hey, we have a chance to do something special. Yeah. I actually have thought about that. And I've talked to the other girls in our class and we're all just so excited. Like we know we can make something great there. Like obviously there has been a lot of great things there in the past, but especially like with the staff change and the new things that are happening, like we know we can make like a history there if we work hard, especially with the girls, like the recruiting and the 26s and so on. Like I'm super excited to see where it goes and see like what will happen. Absolutely. And then Abby, a bit different scenario. You're, I mean, you're going to the best of the best right now. Texas is winning at everything um what what does that feel like that you're going into a the family and the culture and i think you're right on um with what you've heard but but just knowing that you are going to the top program right now in the country yeah i think i mean it's super exciting we've won the last two and i think that doesn't stop us from what we see in the future and like we all have the same goal in mind we're all excited for the future but we all want to kind of just get it done and right from right from the start from when we get there just start <laughs> just start killing it and compete with each other and I yeah I think we're all just super excited and we all have the same mind mindset that hey yes we've won the last two but we still want to win so many more and yeah well and I would think that that has turned into um such an amazing atmosphere. I'm excited. I'm getting my first game in Austin um, this fall, but um, the environment there and everything at UT oh, yeah. is, is a big wow. deal. Wow. You got to get ready for that. I know. I know. Well, Carly, don't you take a back seat because the PAV is plenty loud. And I think you were 
at some matches. So that place gets plenty loud uh, when the Gophers are playing well. So, guys, I want to thank you so much um, for your time and taking time uh, to talk about it. I think you brought up some great points and you were you were honest. And that's what we want to do with uh, part of our mission is just educating um prospects every year a little bit more so they're ready and can make the best decisions for them um one last piece of advice carly what would you give if you just had to say one thing to a 26 most important thing for them or for you was what um i would say the most important advice is just to be confident be confident in your decisions be confident when you're talking to coaches and don't let other, other people's like words or opinions make you feel like less of yourself than you are. Awesome. Abby, what about you? Yeah, I'd say just be authentic in how you act. Just be yourself. And when all these coaches are contacting you, just trust your gut and um, yeah, just have fun on the process. It, process it'll be over fast, but also it picks up fast. So enjoy yeah. the moment. Enjoy the moment for sure. That's what I learned last year, that it is so crazy. There's like all this buildup and then it hits and it's just like a whirlwind for about a month. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, all right, you guys committed. We'll, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like, all right, see you in college in two years now. But thank you guys for your time. Abby Vanderwall, um, top players in the class, Texas commit, and Carly Gilk, another one of the top. Uh, outside slash opposites in the class and a golden gopher commit. Um, hope to see you guys at nationals um, and keep being awesome teammates and excited to follow your great college careers. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thanks guys. Hey, and everybody else, this is Darren Tipton again for the VB Adrenaline um, Podcast. We thank you for tuning in um, and taking time to join us. You can follow us on our new Instagram that we build each and every day at Volleyball Adrenaline and on, on the X at VBAdrenaline.com. And thank you guys for your time. We'll be back with more recruiting info, more talk with the top prospects in the country um, soon. And thanks for your time, everybody. Take care.